Welcome to Conversations. I'm Mukhtadar Khan, your host. And today I'm going to talk about Janet Yellen's visit to China. She's been there for, I guess, less than 48 hours, and she's already threatened China and expressed America's concern for China's economic policies. So this was something that was clearly unexpected. I mean, I did anticipate that there would be uh, strong conversations and strong discussions. And if you remember uh, the conversation that I did two days ago, uh, talking about red lines and coercive diplomacy, in which I talked about how uh, Xi Jinping was uh, talking tough to Biden on the phone with regards to Taiwan. So I did anticipate that the, uh, the Janet Yellen, uh, who is a Secretary of Treasury, uh, like the Minister of Foreign uh, Finance in other countries, so she would have some tough conversations with China, but I didn't expect her to threaten China. I also did not expect her to, um, to talk so bluntly. So that was interesting. She had a meeting with uh, He Li Feng, uh, the vice premier, and now she's going to Beijing, uh, where she was going to meet uh, with uh, the foreign minister and others, and, and I think the mayor of Beijing. Uh, but uh, so let me talk about what really happened today. Uh, and this is this is important. This is a major development. Uh, but before that, subscribe to Conversation, like this video, press the bell icon, and don't forget to share this uh, with others uh, uh, once you're finished watching this video. Uh, so basically, it seems that all day long, uh, while attending the NATO conference, Anthony Blinken kept talking about uh, China's support for Russia's defense industry. And all day long, in every panel, every session, Anthony Blinken kept talking about the United States seems to be worried. Things are different now. And so, so people who spoke to the press from the NATO side of it, they could sense uh, America's in, in urgency and worry with regard to what China is doing for Russia. So they're talking about space-related technology, uh, optics-related. Uh, basically, I think this has got to do with hypersonic missiles and China's capacity to uh, Russia's uh, military-industrial complex. So Anthony Blinken is basically saying that Russia, uh, China is sending dual-purpose technology, things that can be used for other things and that can be used uh, also in military technology. So, for example, if you send uh, advanced uh, laptops for, for playing video games, uh, the technology in that can also be used for guided missiles or drones, etc. So, apparently, China has been sending, selling uh, Russia a lot of this dual technology, uh, which is now helping Russia rebuild its uh, uh, basically military base and military industrial base. Uh, and that has got the West really worried. They feel that the help that China is providing Russia is not only clearly undermining the war uh, effort of Ukraine, but is also undermining the security of Europe and the West. So they are basically worried that uh, Russia is becoming more stronger and more powerful militarily thanks to the help from China. So Anthony Blinken is apparently, according to Financial Times, demanding that all allies do three things. One, they bring it up in their diplomacy with Chinese when they meet their counterpart from China and bring this issue up immediately. Uh, and the second thing is that when they talk about China, they need to talk about China's help to Russia and that it needs to stop. Uh, and the third one is to really step up the sanctions uh, against Chinese companies which are selling dual technology to Russia. So these are three things that Anthony Blinken wants to do. And so I guess she got the memo. Uh, and so Janet Yellen lands in China and the, she does two things. She basically expresses a concern at the huge manufacturing capacity. And this is important for India too, to pay attention to what is actually going on in China. Uh, China has ramped up its uh, green technology manufacturing capacity. Uh, and it, the state might be subsidizing the company. So, so there is, because there is huge capacity, uh, the Chinese companies are competing with each other and reducing margins. And therefore the prices of Chinese, uh, especially green technology products like e-cars, uh, EVs, uh, electronic, electric vehicles is gone down significantly. And China is just producing many and just flooding the markets. 
uh, when I was in India, one of my friends drives a Chinese uh, uh, electric vehicle. I think it's called Morris Garage. Uh, I'm, it was a fabulous car. I wish it was available here in the US. I would have bought it right away. Uh, uh, I mean, it's probably half the price of a Tesla and probably just as good. So, so both Europe and the US are quite worried. And besides the security talk uh, that, oh, China uh, electric vehicles can collect data like TikTok, they're really worried about the cost. So it's very clear, uh, Yellen went and said that if you continue to sell such cheap products and then you flush, uh, I mean, basically flood the market with inexpensive uh, solar cells, inexpensive batteries, and in inexpensive electric vehicles, then uh, American companies, which America is subsidizing, will not be able to compete. And so America will lose jobs, American companies will die. So they want a level playing field. So, so it sounds something like that, saying that you should not do things to make your companies uh, competitive, which is, I don't know how to say it, for a country that talks about free markets, talks about uh, free trade, <laughs> this is quite a, a strange uh, mercantilist policy because the U.S. is doing the same thing. The U.S. is subsidizing uh, its uh, chip manufacturing uh, uh, industry. The United States is uh, also giving benefits, tax benefits to many of its uh, tech companies. Uh, the United States government gives a lot of money for research and development in technology arena. And more than that, the United States government is also imposing sanctions on high-end chips and technology exports to China, uh, which the Chinese uh, uh, Vice Premier uh, He Li Feng immediately brought up and said, look, you guys are uh, also playing dirty games with us by uh, preventing exports. And Yellen said, oh, we need to take a look at it and it'll take months. Uh, we'll try to fix that. I don't know if there is some kind of an agreement that, okay, you let us... Uh, uh, buy advanced technology and chips from the U.S. and we will slow down on this uh, manufacturing blitzkrieg that China apparently has re released. What is interesting to me is that America and Europe are so worried about this massive uh, uh, capacity in uh, green technology that China has suddenly unleashed. Why is India not talking about it? Well, I mean, India in spite of all his talk, is importing literally billions of dollars. Uh, and apparently, a lot of them are solar cells. Uh, and if India wants to go on this make in India uh, and manufacturing uh, capacity building at home, how is it going to compete with this major Chinese uh, manufacturing, uh, shall we say, strategy? Uh, and I'm surprised that there's not so much discussion going on uh, in India. <coughs> Most of the people are, oh, I mean, people either are jingoistic in their discussion of these things uh, or simply ignore this. So, so I'm surprised that, or rather I'm not surprised that they're not looking at this issue seriously. So this is what the concern, that this is primarily the reason why Janet Yellen has gone there to, to try and change China's um, uh, economic uh, strategy. The second thing uh, is uh, that China uh, Yellen did issue a very serious warning to China and said there will be serious consequences if China Chinese companies continue to transfer uh, dual technology or provide material support to Russia. Uh, I don't know what that means. Uh, China is buying a lot of Russian oil, biggest market. Uh, second, India is second. Uh, they're buying literally over $200 billion worth of oil from China, from, uh, sorry, from Russia. Uh, and they're also exporting a lot to Russia. And clearly, they are helping the Russian economy survive. The Without the help of India and China, the Russian economy would have collapsed under the pressure of the sanctions that the West had imposed after Russia's invasion uh, of Ukraine. But uh, uh, the question now remains, will Janet Yellen also make a trip uh, to India and threaten India to stop supporting Russia? But it's quite possible that 
uh, Europeans who are imposing sanctions on Russia, Russia, Russian oil exports, and then buying the same Russian oil once it's refined by India and importing them uh, may not act that tough with India because they are benefiting. I mean, they are subverting their own sanctions, which is kind of an illogical thing. Uh, one, some diplomat was trying to explain in, 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 in a recent meeting in India that once Russian oil is refined in India, it is not Russian oil anymore. Uh, it becomes Indian oil, I guess. So India exports it. But the point is that the Russian economy is continuing to export and and uh, survive as a result of that. So anyway, this is an interesting geopolitical development uh, uh, that uh, the West is getting really panicky. And I don't think this is a very smart move to threaten China because all the threats against Russia have failed. I mean, even they can't even threaten Israel. Netanyahu basically tells them to go jump. Uh, so they are not able to uh, pressure any country. They tried pressuring India not to buy Russian oil. India told them, go jump. Uh, They're trying to pressure Israel not to do commit humanitarian crimes uh, and not to kill people. And Israel goes on doing that. Anyway, this is a very interesting development. Uh, and uh, I think the West's uh, Ukraine policy is unraveling. The Congress is not giving the money. I mean, Joe Biden wants to send billions and billions, over $60 billion to Ukraine, wants to send them as more weapons, uh, and uh, wants to continue this war for endlessly till Russia eventually collapses. But it appears that Russia is doing much better than expected. It is quite possible that Russia might annex major cities uh, in southern, uh, moving more deeper into Ukraine. Kharkiv might be the next city which could fall to Russia. Uh, but we shall see. But I do think this is a, 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 an interesting development. I mean, I was talking about coercive diplomacy just two days ago, but I think this is really tough talking and uh, uh, it needs to be seen how China responds. Because basically what the U.S. is demanding is saying, look, your economy has been in trouble. Okay, your real estate market is down, your GDP growth rate has dropped from 8-9% to 4%. And we understand that you are suffering from deflationary economics, your youth are unemployed. So the strategy that you have come up with to save your economy is unsuitable to our geopolitical interests. So Europe is more important than China so let the Chinese economy not revive itself. So dump this strategy uh, so that Europeans may feel safe from Russia. Basically, that's what it's saying, that our security is more important than your economic development. And if you do not play ball, there will be serious consequences. I really want to see what China and how China responds to it. Because China has suffered economically because of uh, the Biden administration and the European uh, sanctions on their countries, uh, the, the decline in imports by 10 to 15 percent less imports to Europe and 10 to 15 percent less imports to the U.S., uh, and also uh, the constant uh, talk of uh, uh, either decoupling or, or, or basically off uh, French shoring ways of restructuring the supply chains uh, have reduced uh, uh, foreign direct investment into China undoubtedly. So there is, you, you saw the dip uh, about 150 billion or, three, or 350 billion, I think was invested in 2022. And then it dropped significantly to by 90% to less than $40 billion worth of investments in 2023. So, so people are hesitant, hesitating to invest in China because of uh, the, the aggressive anti-China economic policies of both Europe and the US. So China is, must be playing on back foot. So we need to see whether China's exports to Russia reduce as a result of this or not. So with that indicator, keep an eye on that. You can see monthly exports. So 
see next month, uh, either May or June, July, whether uh, Chinese exports to Russia go down or not. So I hope you found this interesting and alert. Go read their two interesting articles, one in the New York Times and one in Financial Times uh, about Jal uh, Janet Yellen's uh, aggressive diplomacy. And she's going to be there for two more days. So I might even talk about it again tomorrow. So, uh, uh, so uh, please go ahead and read those two articles. Uh, until next time, I'm your host, Muhtadar Khan. Don't forget to subscribe to Conversation, like this video, press the bell icon, and share this video uh, with your network.